Hello, it's Josh here. Hopefully you can hear me and see me in the bottom right hand corner. Um, this Tracker Tuesday video, I am going to focus on sectional times uh, within Gigi's Gold using their results suite. And the idea really is to, uh, I suppose, highlight some of the things you can look for that I look for. Um, without getting overly technical, uh, I'm, I suppose I'm an... Um, intrigued amateur when it comes to sectional time still and i'll talk there's two races from wolverhampton on the 2nd of july that i'm kind of going to use as example races um to try and give a flavor for yeah the sort of things you can look at and note down and take away um not necessarily to highlight and touch on the exact horses I do, uh, but as I go through the couple of examples, you'll hopefully, um, or you may learn something, I'm kind of learning as I go along, but you may take away something, note something down. There's different ways you can use sectional times. Um, there's not the way I use them, so there's, there's the way you can use sectional times within looking at furlong, by furlong splits looking at the overall time I suppose to try and project forward how good a horse may be especially for unexposed horses can this maiden step up to uh, class one or group one company or something like that I tend to focus on handicaps as many of you know I'm trying to use them to frame a race and work out what's happened uh, and to work out why a horse has performed as it has um, Due to that performance, can that run be upgraded? Can it be marked up? Uh, is there an excuse for the way they ran? Um, if the race was run differently, or there was a different pace setup, or if they got a better ride, or a different ride, or different tactics, could the horse have performed any better? Could they have achieved something um which they didn't do today, but which they may do tomorrow or in their next race, granted a different set of conditions and different setup. Um, and it, it's useful, I think, to try and, well, using sectionals to bring a race to life in terms of the numbers and to work out what they should have done. Um, and when I say what they should have done, I'm kind of talking about within that race and the par sectional times for that race. So I'm best. I'm in uh, Gigi's here. I've got uh, there's different settings. I've recorded previous videos which kind of um, explain some of these different things. But I can uh, get up the running lines for each horse. I can get up the sectionals for each horse. And I've I've there's uh, opening, middle, and closing splits for this race. Now this is a five furlong sprint. There's call points which are the different points. So you've got. Uh, the start to four furlongs out, four to three, three to two, two to one, and one to the finishing line. Uh, I'll get on to what I'm kind of looking for at the moment. This chart may best explain it. Um, so this is the sectional percentage by furlong uh, for this particular race. Now, the number of races in the par sample, 210. So we can have confidence in this black line here. So this black line is basically telling us of those 210 races at Wolverhampton in these conditions uh, this is the par performance for those horses this is kind of the most efficient way to race in these conditions at this track any horse which overshoots this black line would suggest they're going too fast at that particular point in the race. Anything which is under the black line is suggesting they went too slow. Um, now, what we have to then try and do is judge whether that was a that whether going too fast or too slow against the par score against this black curve uh, is a positive and negative. What it tells us about that horse's performance and whether that that information is any use for us moving forward in trying to predict whether or not they could perform any differently, um, either in similar race conditions and different race conditions, you name it. That's that's the theory. It doesn't always pan out, of course. Um, so that's the chart. Now, what I want to do here is I look down. The green and the even uh, colours, let's just ignore the actual times and the splits for a moment. 
are kind of what the horse should have done. That's what you could call kind of the greens are an efficient ride. Um, now we're not, I'm not really interested in efficient rides as such because they're not telling me anything. They're not telling me whether the horse did something they shouldn't have done at the wrong part of the race and therefore whether a performance um, can be marked up or down or whatever. So I'm kind of looking for, so I'm not looking for greens necessarily. Um, now there's many different ways you can look at this uh, and some people will focus on greens and evenly run fractions and try and work out where the horse was in the race at a particular time and what that may tell them. Um, so that's what the green and the even. Um, the kind of blue and the turquoise is saying they went slow and they went a lot slower than they could have done. Um, and you've got to try and work out why a horse has gone slow at a particular part of the race. Now, if they go slow at the end of the race, as you can see here, if they're slowing down that markedly in the final couple of furlongs, that may suggest they went too quick at the beginning. Um, and uh, if they went too slow at the start, if this was all kind of blues, uh, and then they sped up near the end, which actually is an example a bit later on in the card, uh, that may suggest uh, they the energy efficiency was all wrong. So they've gone too slow at the beginning, they've gone too fast at the end. Or you can go too fast at the beginning and too slow at the end, um, which is, uh, handily enough, <laughs> the example here. Um, so I'm interested in reds, actually. I'm interested in oranges and reds where the horse has gone faster, much faster than the par time and sectional uh, finishing percentage for that part of the distance and that part of the race. And if that tells me anything, um, and as I scan down here, hopefully you'll see lots of red. Uh, and I'm going to focus on just that Lord, um, who's gone very fast, blistering through the first uh, furlong. Um, he's gone quite fast through uh, kind of uh, four to three out and three to two out. Um, now this three to two, uh, you can see here, um, by the time he gets to two furlongs out from the start, his clock total time at this point of 36.2 seconds, uh, which is interesting to know. Savalas has clocked 36.53. Now, remembering that uh, roughly one second equals six lengths on the flat, half a second, uh, three lengths, uh, and that's you know a good um, guy to have in our minds in terms of then realizing what this time equates to in terms of distance for some of these splits. Um, so the winner, 36.53, um, come the two furlongs out mark, uh, just that Lord 36.2, which is not overly, overly different, but if you look at the second who just got beat half a length, um, by the two point, he's run it in 37.05, two furlongs out, um, which is obviously, uh, a fair bit slower um, than the eventual winner. Now this horse carries on and runs even fractions and just gets beaten half a length uh, at the two point, two furlongs out because of the effort and time that just that Lord has put in, his legs start slowing, he starts tying up and he starts falling through the back of the TV. If I go to the chart, this may kind of bring some life. So within GG's, um, which actually has a lot of different buttons you can click and different things you can pull up, I can click on the horses here at the bottom. So Savalas here, he's gone quick uh, at the start, and then he's tracked, and this is a pretty much an efficient ride from Holly Doyle, uh, tracked the kind of pace here, if not gone slightly quick in a moment, I'll touch on that, um, and then slowed down uh, and kind of slowed down uh, the fastest, if that makes sense. Um, so it hasn't slowed down as quick as uh, the horse I'm about to click on. Um, Magic in the USA, uh, Magic J, sorry, is uh, born in the USA. I'm not going to break into a Bruce Springsteen song, don't worry, don't really have a singing voice. Um, he, yeah, he ran efficiently there, uh, and Savalas has kind of just clung on. Um, what I could say about that is if Savalas had not gone as fast in the early fractions, and we're not talking much, it's just the first furlong really, um, he may have uh, won that slightly uh, easier, slightly more comfortable, um, although he was hanging on at the end. Uh, that's something to note, but I'm, I'm 
kind of think if I just click on him as I tick around the 10 minutes uh, and I'm kind of thinking as I go along to a point. He's had 32 starts. Uh, he's pretty unexposed on the all weather. He's run since, but they upped him to a class two at Ascot. Um, I suppose what I could say there is if if there's a race without back at Wolverhampton, say, um, I'm not quite sure what all weather mark he went up to. Uh, but if back at uh, Wolverhampton... Um, able to race prominently but without the pace pressure of say a just that lord uh he might be able to build on that last win back on the all weather um because arguably to go as fast as he did early above par and then still cling on uh you could mark up and there's an upgrade score of two not by much but still of interest but the horse i want to click on is just that lord this purple line and you see whoa um <laughs> You can see how fast he's gone above the par and above Savalas. So hard, 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 hard. And then he's just gone pop and he's fallen off the edge of a cliff and gone backwards. Um, if you watch the race back, um, which always helps to bring uh, alive the race to a point. Um, let me just uh, make sure the sound doesn't come through, but you can watch the race back uh, for kind of further interest to try and bring some life. So just that Lord's here, Rab Havlin, he's crouched low. Look at, he's still riding him, pushing him. There's Savalas there. Holly's thinking, well, I want to get the lead, but oh, the clock in my head saying, just that Lord, you're going too fast. Uh, she tries to keep him up there. Just that Lord, Reb Havlin's still pushing, he's still squeezing with his legs. He wants to get that lead. Um, and the time and that speed, and you can watch this visually without those sectional times and think, oh, he's kind of gone quick there. Look, but those sectional times bring alive just how fast he's gone. He's still not being properly ridden. Everything else behind, look, is being pumped a long time before he has. But at this point, he's just used up far too much energy and he starts dropping back through the field. Um, Savalas, who wasn't that far off, done a bit too much, arguably, starts to slow up here. There's a fast finisher here, but they've gone pretty quick. Um, so... That's why I kind of think Savalas might be able to be marked up to a point. But just that Lord, even more so, because he simply wasn't given a chance to get home by how he was ridden there. He was sent off 18-1. to 1. It was his second start of the season, so he should have had a bit of fitness. Um, but he was never going to get home by how fast he went. Uh, so the conclusion there is, could be with lesser pace, with less pace pressure, or a much more efficient ride, would he be able to perform any better? Um, and without the sectional times, you might watch that and think, well, has something gone wrong? Has something, why has he suddenly fallen out the back of the TV so quick? Um, but they actually give you a simple demonstration, which oh, some of you may have watched it and be able to tell with your own eyes, that surely he's gone too fast. Well, the sectional times for the par of that race, for the speed, for the ideal speed that you should go uh, within those race conditions, as per that black line on the chart, he's gone far, far too quick. Um, now, that was a mark of 82. Um, he's obviously had 37 runs. We had some decent form. Uh, well, in 2019, he did, obviously, Epsom Class 3. You can see with that early speed why that kind of, well, the quickest five furlongs there is, was ideal. He has some pretty good form under Luke Morris. And if you dig into the horse a bit more, maybe the booking of Luke Morris moving forward could be significant. Um you can check the handicap marks and go into different things. Now I'm ticking around to 14 minutes here. Uh, and you can try and work out what his ideal conditions are. But the point to take away from that performance is he was never going to finish his race off there given how quick he went. Um, it was pretty blistering. Uh, and given some of his form and everything else, a case could be made that with a uh, more efficient ride on the front end, he clearly likes um, uh, making all and being prominent, uh, he would do much, much better. And he's only started to give away, I suppose, from two furlongs out. Um, you can mark up Savalas because he wasn't that far off the pace, yet was still able to keep going. Uh, and when dropped back into the more appropriate grade on the all-weather, maybe he can back up that win at Wolverhampton. Um, 
so that's just some of the things. I don't want to go on and on because I'm ticking around to 15 minutes. But hopefully uh, for this particular race uh, and that particular horse, uh, you've found some of those musings interesting enough. Bye for now.